Hello and welcome to all our viewers today. I'm Suchet Najee, editor of Outlook Business, and I have with me a very special guest. It is Mr. Vipul Sabarwal. Join me in welcoming him. He's the managing director of Luminous Power Technologies and is responsible for all company operations. Vipul, may I call you Vipul? Is that all right yes, with you? Yes, please. It'll, it'll be a pleasure, uh, Sujinta, to call me Vipul. And it's a, so a pleasure much. for us to be here with Outlook. Uh, and thank you very much uh, for your time and opportunity uh, to have an interaction with you. I can assure you, Vipul, that the pleasure is all ours. Uh, I'll do a little bit of an introduction of Vipul. I'm sure he doesn't need an introduction, but still I'll go ahead. Vipul joined Luminous in uh, 2014, September that year, and has been part of the Luminous family for almost seven years now. He is a strategic leader and has been a catalyst for driving growth for Luminous Power Technologies. Vipul has an economics graduate degree from Delhi University and an alumnus of the Jamna Lal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies in Mumbai. Welcome once again, Vipul. So today, viewers, we'll be chatting about the very dynamic space that is renewable energy. We'll talk about Luminous's role in this space. Uh, my first question to you, Vipul, is that what role does Luminous play as a pioneer in residential solar solutions in India, uh, given the global aim that we have of sustainability? Thanks, thanks very much. That's a great question. I think, I think it's important to understand that, first of all, uh, uh, India is very important uh, from a solar uh, unit from a market. First of all, I think the, the global initiative of you know, reducing global warming and becoming green has put a lot of importance on solar. And the second important point is amongst the markets in the world, when we see from the footprint of the country on uh, the, you know, the whole area where the sun rays are available for a longer period of time, India is probably one of the leading markets for solar. Yeah. And uh, the third uh, aspect, very importantly, is that the Indian homes are all individual homes, uh, dominantly, though we see a lot of apartments in urban India, but uh, they are you know, dominantly individual homes in India. And solar as a renewable energy, as an alternative means of storing energy, is a very good option. And it is getting traction. Uh, over the period. And if I look at from 2014 and now, or even from earlier, when Schneider took over the company, it was barely 5-10% of our business was coming in from solar. But today, as a vertical, we already about 20-25% of the business. And we aim that in the next four to five years, uh, this could be about 40% of our business uh, in the company. So it's very important, very strategic, uh, from a, a from a business point of view and even from a consumer point of view, I think solar is a very important piece because in an Indian context, a consumer wants to have a choice of the storage as well uh, in the in the whole you know domain of power, and their uh, residential solar really fits in very well. Absolutely. And you know, this this uh, entire space where we're looking at sustainability, India has very uh, set itself very stiff targets and we know globally that it is imperative that India meet its target for the world to be, become more sustainable. Now, how is Luminous uh, trying to differentiate itself from the mirage of uh, offerings that the space has? Yeah, I think that's a very important question and I think great uh, opportunity to share that. So uh, the reason why, uh, so we actually did a lot of consumer inside work in solar and we found out that uh, the awareness about solar as energy is very good. Uh, thanks yeah. to the government, thanks to the global education program, everybody knows about solar energy and so on. And then we said, okay, okay why are you not adopting it? Uh, that was a very unique you know, question. So there a couple of factors came out very loud and clear. One was they said that the post-purchase, uh, you know, satisfaction was very low. So people bought solar with a lot of expectations, but the post-purchase experience was very different. Some were happy, some were not happy, some uh, were not sure what they get. That was one very important factor. With the Third factor which came in was that Indian homes, every rooftop is different from the other one. The neighbor's house is very different from my house. So every solution is actually customized. There's no standard solution which we can you know, make and say, okay, 
you have a home of four bedroom, three bedrooms. Uh, here is a solution, buy it off the shelf. And here you go. Uh, the angle of the sun, the way it is to be facing, and what height it is uh, to avoid the shadow. And all, there's a huge solution. So it is almost customized solution for every home. The third factor which came out uh, was the consumer finance. At the end of the day, the purchase of solar, at a, at a, even at a residential level, it's a, it's a very considered purchase. Um, it, it would vary from, uh, say, rupees one and a half lakh to about six lakhs, seven lakhs at the, at the residential level. If it's somebody's looking for a small commercial uh, establishment, it could be about 10 lakhs to about 15 lakhs. Hence, therefore, the, I think one of the areas where we are working and where we would say the industry to look at is also how we can get structured consumer finance in that area. Having said all the things, the less the alumnus started out by saying what we can do. Yeah. So we worked a lot on educating the consumer in making solutions which would fit them. So we have a solar by luminous uh, you know, portal where people can say, okay, I have a home, this is my location. Uh, this is what I want to do. And then somebody will come down and look at the solution and give it. So that's one. Then we said, okay, what do we do with the consumer? So there were a lot of myths about consumer. And we had a big campaign running actually effectively from the year 2020 onwards till now, which is to educate the consumer about solar, how it can be done, ease of installation. Uh, we even have a call center number where people can call us and say, okay, uh, we have a certain level of, uh, you know, or inquiry around that area. So that is one. The th another area where I think a lot of work is happening, but a lot more needs to be done, yeah. is around training and educating the partners, educating the ecosystem, or I would say creating the ecosystem which can, which can go and talk solar and go mm. and talk about the trainings. In fact, even as part of a CSR, mm. we do a lot of training on solar. These are right. open forums. Maybe anybody can come and get trained on solar. We do a lot of training program and we're saying, we have to be the driver of advocacy. We have to be the driver of the ecosystem, which we can build. At the end of the day, we believe if the consumer start adopting it, the adoption rates will vary depending upon the ease of finance, ease of installation. But I think there'll be very, very important steps in building up a very large ecosystem where consumers are playing in it. At the same level, the government is doing a lot of work in, in setting up projects uh, in those areas. But our focus is how do we facilitate adoption of it at the consumer level? You know, you spoke about uh, dissemission of information. A key area uh, is uh, government uh, intervention. The government in the past few years has done a lot. For example, the smart metering that's up, uh, that's available. Uh, the government is thinking more seriously about open access. In fact, you know, uh, the, in the last 15 years, perhaps this is the most serious thought that has gone into open access. There are a few friends that I have in Delhi NCR who are journalists, so therefore they're more aware and they've opted for solar. They have installations on their homes. But... There are issues about these certain interventions that the government has done. What do you think about them? And what is uh, the kind of impact that they can have on proliferation of solar adoption by retail customers like maybe me, my home? So I think uh, you yeah, very rightly said. Uh, um, so there is, an, uh, there is an adoption. I think consistency of policy is something which I think uh, is important. Mm -hmm. So like the talk about uh, the issue talked about being a grid tied policy. So gritted policy is very important to facilitate the growth of solar. Yes, yeah. I think government has been uh, listening to the industry, listening to the bodies, but I think a consistency of policy and consumer friendly. Mm. You know, uh, how fast can I set it up myself? How fast can I get my subsidy? How well do I get my meter? What is the level of digitization we can do in that area? I think these are big steps. I would say uh, the government is making steps. I think a lot more can be done in that area to facilitate it. And one area where I think the government can really help is to have a structured consumer finance given by banks in a very open manner. So I, I take one example, uh, 20 years ago, the automobile industry boom happened because of consumer finance. Yes. Uh, it was the retail banks which made a big leap 
in that direction. I think the same leap of faith is required behind solar. And I think the while the worries and the fears of the retail banks are fair, but I think some facilitation is required to say, okay, we will give lower rates of interest, we will structure it, uh, we will uh, you know, set up a bank which only gives consumer finance uh, from solar. And the ease of execution, one is the finance is available, but how easy it will be accessible, what's the processing time, what are the documentation required, what's the KYC, I think somebody has to work around it, we are working a lot around it, but I think uh, that's one area which can really catapult the whole growth yeah. of solar at the residential level with the consumer. So along with ease of uh, taking credit, there's also the uh, an important aspect in it about cost of credit. If I keep these two aside, uh, what are the government interventions you think which can be done, which will push, give a boost to solar adoption? I think, in uh, I think, I think the you know, grid tide is one option, which I think can be made easily available. I think a lot of new connections which happen, the government could say, why do you take grid tide rather than take a normal meter? So even if the consumer wants to set up solar in the future, at least as far as the connections with the, with this, with the uh, state electricity boards are concerned, those are set from the very beginning. Otherwise, you know, to change from a normal meter to a grid tide meter is a little bit of a you know, cumbersome process. There are a couple of steps you need to follow. The, but you could say, okay, like, over a period of time, we could say all new connections, we will be great. Yeah. That's one option people can do. I think the, the, the government bodies are today probably have the largest network possible yeah. on the feet on the street ground. Yeah. Their awareness and education is good, but it can go to the next level. You say, okay, if you're buying, uh, you know, uh, a solar, uh, you're setting up a new home, do you want a great time? Do you want to do this as an option? And the so many millions of people go onto the government websites and pay the monthly bills on electricity. That's another important platform of communication. Yes, you absolutely. Want, before you pay, say, do you want a grid tight connection? And say, okay, yes. if you tick, it can happen. It's a small example. I'm sure huh. there are many more. But I think the infrastructure is available. And say, okay, we're doing a drive. They're available uh, at a lower cost and some. So I think that will then I mean, the consumers may or may not put solar when they build a new home. And a lot of them today are are retrofit, meaning post-purchase yes. solar being installed. But if the bodies are told, okay, you can do it at the beginning, you can take the meter now, you can install whenever you want to install, will be another big step in that direction. You know, technology is going to be the differentiator as it always has been. But with, with the cutting edge technology, there's also cost that is uh, associated. Now, which, the, and again, when it comes to technology and innovation, there are loads and loads of them available in the market. Which are the technologies you think is actually going to be the future of sustainability in India? Which are the ones do you think are more viable? See, uh, so Chinta, the question is great. I think what is, I mean, I mean if you look at the, the press, there's a lot of talk about hydrogen and new technology. But when we come to the consumer, when we come to the home, I think there are a couple of factors which become in the in the Indian decision making uh, set for the consumer. The first and foremost is uh, easy to install, yeah, uh, safety. That's the other factor. And third is I want to have a decision on my storage in my domain. You know, consumer is not going to say, okay, okay there is you know ten homes at the end of the tenth home. Uh, there's a solution and I can draw yeah. from. Now, in fact, you know, world over, so the, the, yeah. the trend so is that people are saying that there are outages. Outages are not an issue in India. Outages are an issue in a global. There's a hurricane and the lights will go off. So people are saying, I need storage. I need to create power and store. Yeah. And choice should be mine. How I store, how much do I store. So in that perspective, when you look at all these dimensions together, solar really stands up. Uh, from a safety point of view, from a point of view of you know ease, okay, somebody can just go onto my rooftop, install it, uh, and then once it works, it's brilliant. And 
there to just intervene okay. once here i had a, i yeah. have a follow up question that is when you talk about storage storage has been the biggest concern when it comes to renewable alternate energy uh, how far are we how many years away are we when uh, you know you can have individual level storage as oh, you can today today most of the solar solutions we sell in fact a very yeah. large part of them are yes. with storage with the lead acid technology of batteries we have got people store we are yeah. we are working on lithium iron and we are quite confident that in about one and one and a half years time we will have a storage solution with lithium i think the options of storage will be many so i think there is another uh, you know medium uh, technology called uh, hybrid which is saying mm -hmm. you have the option to export or not to export yeah today the grid tide when it comes the uh, government situation policy that you produce consume or export mm -hmm. that's what there is another domain i produce i consume i store i export yeah so that's a hybrid model that's another factor which will come there is some you know evolution happening there some products have been developed there to bring in that direct but storage is going to be an important point for the consumer especially in india yes absolutely where you that, have large hours of uh, uh, sun which is uh, happening so in fact 85 to 90% of the solutions we sell are with storage and yeah. they like to be in that domain in fact when we work in a labs in the r&d we work on both we working on three areas one is grid tide one is hybrid which is you have a choice and a big piece is being worked upon with with storage with solution and i think the other area which you talked about technology is i think digitization is going to play a very big role you know am i able to see how much have i yes. generated today how much have we uh, you know saved today what's the state so we have developed it we have developed yes. we have apps around that area but they are evolving but are we 100% satisfied with that i think we have to go couple of notches up from where we are but the consumer of tomorrow especially with the new millenniums uh, coming in the market uh, digitization is like a stable food absolutely you cannot launch a product without having the first thing that the millennials are going to ask is is it digital can i see it on my phone yes so and i think that's important so how far are we from that day when i can see it on my we phone can, we how can far today are we? the solar solutions we launched today yes we can you can see the generation at home in fact uh, i I, I'm in my own home. I did the experiment. I was about three years ago uh, when we launched it. I said we cannot launch it till I experience it, and uh, I, I put it up in my house and said, "Okay, now can I show it to me on an app?" Yeah. And an app was launched, and uh, there were there were challenges in getting it correct. But today I can see from my phone what are the generation is my solar system working, uh, how much engine. it needs to be more consumer friendly talking yes. to more the language of the millenniums and so on and so forth but we have started it we have connected products right. in that domain and i think and and it's a good question you raised there that i think that piece is very important because when we go back to the consumer inside work we done and people said i bought it i don't know whether i save money or don't save money i spend the money yes so that i think digitization is not only for the sake of digitization digitization has to be done to show to the consumer that yes. you have saved now there are people i'll take a I'll take a live example of some i mean i when i got as part of my job i travel uh, you know different parts of the country and i gone to amritsar and i met uh, a you know channel partner of mine he said i put solar uh, i said okay so you put and i want to you know challenge the paradigm how why did you buy it said because i thought i'll get saving so i said how much saving are you get so he now this is an experienced i would call it a, you know a consumer plus so he said in the morning i go when i know it is being generated i go and switch off the mains he put some system in the house and till the evening i run the house on the electricity in the evening when i know i i am uh, you know going to be uh, re requiring it i uh, then uh, you know bring back the mains and then so here is a guy who is having multiple choice uh, to, to do that and experiencing it and therefore there are different kinds of consumers who are doing that and the real benefit is if we can digitize it for a consumer like this and say okay you can switch off the mains run it on solar you can switch on the mains 
and do the investing. That's Absolutely. the dream we have gone. But of course. the decision making has to come with this business. That's yes. the difference. Information As you said, of, there has to be knowledge dissemination. That is when the decision you have empowered the customer. Absolutely. I mean, Luminous has always started the journey, the pioneering journey where people, you stay in a bungalow, so it's easier for you to perhaps opt. But for people like me, middle class people who stay in, uh, um, in these multi-storied buildings, uh, I think your real challenge will be when you can come to each, even each house in a multi-storied building and provide uh, solar options, so, right? So, so that's, uh, that's, some societies in, uh, I would say, in NCR are taking a leap of faith and saying that, can we do it at our rooftops and we at least generate uh, some power which can be used for common utility. Mm -hmm. May or may not be for homes because the, 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 the surface area available may not be that long. But there are now, uh, you know, um, the individual homes coming up and saying that in Bangalore area, or saying uh, we have an option if you want uh, to do solar um, at the time when you're buying it we can do it for you and those kind of areas. there are people who are coming and saying i'm building a new bungalow can i take solar right now right now they're doing it post construction mm -hmm. so these are new trends uh, but i think there'll be the, the ability to facilitate it and let the decision making be made by the person who wants to take the decision is, I think, going to be a big step in the direction. I'll come back to questions about Lumina specifically. So tell us a little bit about your uh, sustainable growth targets for this entire decade. So our, uh, our, our endeavor is that by 2025, 40% of our business should come in from uh, the renewable space. So I think that's very important target. For us. Two is not only that, all of a new initiative on factory. We're setting up a new factory in Haridwar. We are saying it, we need to put solar there on day one. We have a warehouse coming in, uh, already established in uh, near Patiala, which already has a solar on it. So I think it's not only that we sell into the consumer, but I think all our big establishments where we can put up solar, uh, we are establishing. Even our office in Gurgaon, we have a solar installation on Roka. Though that's more used by the R&D teams available there to see what solutions are working and what solutions are not working. But we believe that uh, 40 to 45% of the business in uh, three to four years will come from solar. Okay. Uh, you know, <clears throat> the focus for India has been on sustainable and green energy, and it is at an all-time high, where India actually is poised to become the world's second largest uh, market for harnessing solar energy. How do you see the solar sector evolving uh, over the next uh, five years, uh, considering that, you know, we're supposed to grow massively, and this is supposed to be the decade for India as far as alternate energy is concerned? I think, you know, I think at the you know, policy level, at a, at a broad policy level, a lot of schemes have been launched by the government to uh, okay, enter the sector and uh, you know some taxes and stuff. I think, I, I think from a from a supply chain perspective, mm -hmm. uh, those will you know facilitate a lot, and I think they will bring uh, some advantage in the you know pricing side. So I think when you say supply chain efficiency, they will bring some advantage in pricing. I think, so if I look at the supply side, I think a lot of work has happened. And if we look at the demand side, the demand generation, I think a lot more work can be done there. Things like, um, do we have, uh, you know, training centers where, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, contractors, electricians can come and learn about solar, can come and, learn how to set up a solar installation. Because at the end of the day, the consumer wall has to be insured. If the consumer wall is not being insured, then uh, it's not going to be a big driver. I mean, we always say that in our company, a good installation, a satisfied consumer gets us to end consumer. But in an unfortunate circumstances, if the installation is not good, that consumer is going to destroy 10 consumers. So you want faith and advocacy to be restored again and again and again and again. I think there is a very important need to build ecosystem to drive demand and build that demand in a manner which, where I think every electrician or every person who can do should talk about solar. That's, I think, what. 
Two, is it being taken at edu educational institution level? You know, recently we had an interaction with the university and they were saying, we're going to start up also on renewable energy. And I said, okay, yeah, that's good. But do you have a lab? We want to fund a lab. We want to fund a lab on uh, you know, sustainable renewable energy. And that discussion is going on with the university. So I think they are the places where innovation will come. They are the places where I think new and new ideas will get developed. How to take it to a very large consumer base in India? Because the ease of solution and the ease of design are things on the demand side which are equally important, which is where companies like Lumina say, okay, okay, we're going to design a new solar. So we ask the question in our R&D teams, okay, um, we develop the product. Um, how many hands up to install it? So we get a lot of hands up. So yeah. in fact, we, launch, we get a brief, we ourselves have launched a program in our own company and said, okay, guys, you want to, anybody wants to have a solar at home, raise the hand. We will work out a very convenient, uh, you know, you know, policy to install it. And so experiential part is very important. Many, we need many, many more advocates behind it to make it happen on the demand side. Other thing is, so education institutions, public training center, consumer finance, and I would say, you know, another area which since we are talking, yeah. I have to take examples of the first world and where we are today. I mean, yeah. we, were, we were talking to some companies, some, I think about three years ago, and they said from my desktop, I can look at the consumer's home and design the solution and send it to them by mail. I said, how you can do that? They said, we have got Google Maps, which are very accurate. And you know, we can do that. We tried it in India. And I fully respect and I all respect for national security that we can't do it at us. But I think, but I would say there is a new emerging drone policy, which is being looked after, which has been come to say, okay, there is a security and there's a non-security area. I think evolution of technology to give good consumer solutions is because in India, if I have to give a consumer solution to somebody's home, I need at least a minimum one yeah. and time two visits to his home. And then there's a third one and there's a fourth one and there's a five. So it doesn't get installed in less than five visits to the home. And today is in period of COVID, you know, asking somebody That's, to yeah. also be even right. five times <laughs> is a struggle. So I think right. so I think on the demand side, I would say training, education institution, ease of making solutions. So is there a way we can get, you know, some technologies available to us is okay, we don't need to go in the person's house. Can somebody be allowed to just fly a drone, take some pictures, make the solution and mm -hmm. give it to us. So I think the demand side needs a lot more innovation. Supply side, I think the government policies are coming around to make them easier. I'm very hopeful that today uh, the prices might come down of solar panel, but you know it's an it's an evolving state, and it's also the demand has gone up. So not very sure of that. But I think the 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 demand side generation lot more innovations can be done. Right. I have one last question before I let you Please. go. You uh, touched upon the subject of the pandemic. Now, uh, the COVID has brought about a certain slowing of the economy. It had, when I looked at data a few months back, also impacted demand for electricity. So do you think in any way the pandemic has actually somehow stunted the demand side of uh, renewable energy, specifically solar? And when do you see the demand coming back? So, uh, so Jinda, what we have seen is that I will I will do a comparison for you of the wave one and the wave two. So in wave one, uh, it was like lights were switched off. Our factories were shut. Nothing was happening. And I think you know people have various different views, but I think that big lockdown we had in wave one last year um, did slow down the impact uh, of the pandemic. And I think uh, though in the wave two lot more uh, you know, impact has happened. But in the wave when we saw a lot of working from home, mm -hmm. which was demanded, and that did not reduce the demand for electricity at the consumer level. Yes, the right. demand for electricity at the industrial level did go down. In fact, from our you know, sales point of view, uh, that was not that much impacted. But in wave two, where the lockdown happened in bits and pieces, not big lockdown, 
the demand for electricity at the consumer level has not come down. In fact, it stayed very much there. We did see an impact on solar business in the wave one because there is no way you can go on it. But now we're seeing in the wave two, after now the wave two is over, that the demand is coming back uh, and it's looking strong. Great. Thank you so much, Vipul, for taking the time out. You know, your conversation is going to be extremely illuminating for our readers and our viewers. And uh, we, have, we are ending on a very positive note that the demand is back and it will be a glorious journey ahead, not only for India, who's going to set the tone for opting for a sustainable planet, but also for Luminous, who, as always, is going to be a pioneer in this field. Thank you so much, Vipul, for your time. Thank you very much. The pleasure was mine as well. Thank you. Thank you.